Hi guys, it's Martin here and in this video we're going to go through how you can get started with Swift Playgrounds for Mac. We'll go through how you can download it from the App Store, how you can get access to Learn to Code and how you can start your coding journey using Swift. So let's get started. First thing that we're going to need to do is head on over to the App Store uh, and download Swift Playground. So I've opened up the App Store here and we're going to go ahead and click on the search bar up in the top left and we're going to search for Swift Playgrounds. Okay, and 99% of the time, it's going to be the first in the top corner here, okay? So, what we're gonna do is we're going to click on, yours may say Git, mine's got the cloud here because I've actually downloaded it before. Um, so where I've got the cloud, um, yours may say Git, so just click on that. It might ask for your password or your fingerprint or depend on the device that you have. Um, so, we're going to go ahead uh, and let that download and come back once that's installed. Playgrounds is now uh, downloaded and installed on my Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and click on open. Okay, so you may be greeted with one of two screens here. So you may end up at here at this home screen or you may end up on a screen where you can actually download all of the different playgrounds. I'll show you that one in a second, but we're going to start here on the home screen. So this is where all of the playgrounds that you download will appear. This is essentially your home screen, and this is where you'll see all of the different playgrounds uh, that you can download and create code on. So let's go ahead and find Learn to Code. So we can see it down here under More Playgrounds. Um, if we wanna see the whole library, we can click on See All over here on the right-hand side. So this is essentially kind of like the playground marketplace. So this is where you can go on and get a whole host of different um, playgrounds to learn coding. So if you want to code with um, a micro bit or a Sphero, you may not know what those are, um, but if you get to a point and you want to learn how to use Swift with those, you can. But we're starting at the beginning. So the first thing that we want to do is learn to code. And there are three different um, learn to code options. Um, so we're going to start with learn to code one. That's the simplest, the basic, um, this is what's going to get you used to the interface and the Swift pro programming language. So we're going to go ahead and click on Git. And what you'll see is that it will start downloading and adding itself to my home page so I can access it from there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and come back once that's downloaded. One has downloaded, so let's go ahead and open it up. So I mentioned briefly before that there are um, a few different versions of Learn to Code. So there's actually three Learn to Codes. Um, each of them go up in difficulty and build on the previous one. Um, however, simply finishing Learn to Code 1 will provide you a great base and understanding of the Swift programming language. So the first thing you're greeted with in Learn to Code 1 is almost a, a PowerPoint slide type presentation. Um, there's only eight sections and each page doesn't contain too much detail. It's just to teach you something basic before you get on and start coding. So I'm going to click through these. Obviously, when you're doing it yourself, make sure that you do read this stuff because it does provide uh, great context and information for what you're going to do um, later on in the course. Okay, so let's hit this big start coding button and then we're here in the Swift Playgrounds interface. So there's a few different elements to this. If we start on the left-hand side, the top left section is basically where you will find your instructions. So here we have a goal. So use Swift commands to tell Byte to move and collect a gem. So essentially all of the challenges in Learn to Code, revol code revolve around Byte, moving and collecting gems or later on toggling switches as well. It's a really fun, interactive way um, to essentially you're solving puzzles, but you're doing it using and learning code. So it says your character Byte loves to collect gems, but he can't do it alone. In this first puzzle, you'll need to write Swift commands 
to move by around the puzzle world to collect a gem. Look for the gem in the puzzle world, enter the correct combination of move forward and collect gem commands, press run my code. So I've read through every word of that. If I have one piece of advice when you're working through Learn to Code, read the instructions because they provide really helpful stuff and sometimes it's tempting later on to go, yeah, I know how to do this, start writing code and then realize you've missed some vital piece of information up here in the top left. So over here is where we actually write our code. So it's told us up here we need to use a combination of move forward and collect gem to get byte, which is our character over here, to collect the gem. Just before, uh, we write our code. Over here is our actual puzzle world. Um, if you click and hold, you can actually rotate around, which really is useful later on when you have more complicated puzzles to see. So I can see from here that I need to move forward once, twice, three times, and then I'm on top of the gem. So I'm going to go back over to my code section, and then down here, it's giving me the instructions. So I don't even have to type it out. Okay, I can if I want to, but I can also just click move forward, move forward, move forward, and then collect gem. And then the last thing that we need to do is here, okay, so just near my face here, is hit run my code. So we can see by moving forwards, he's got to the gem and he's collected it. So now we've got a congratulations and we can move on to the next challenge. Final thing, um, we have a couple of extra buttons up here. So this one will just take you back. Um, and this one here shows all of the different challenges that you'll go through in Learn to Code. So um, sometimes you'll find you'll be a, a challenge further up and you want to go back and just check how you did something in a previous one. This would be the easiest way to do that. Okay, so I hope that that has been useful for you. Um, again, it's a really useful way to learn the Swift programming language. If you don't know anything about Swift or programming in general, I would always recommend Learn to Code as a great place to start.